Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nick Flanagan Weekly. This has been a long time in the making because I am just having a lot of wild issues with uh, cords, with computers, with microphones. The whole thing is just real wacky. And uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to the episode I did with Andrew uh, the other day in Montreal. Um, Today, we have a guest named Bo Martin. She's an actress who's been on The Expanse. Uh, She's been in Molly's Game. I was in a movie with her called Diamond Tongues. She also was in a movie called The Sundowners, very briefly. And she was also in a movie called Every Day is Like Sunday. Uh, She is all over. She works a lot. And she's very talented, really funny, and a nice person. And an interesting person. So that was why I talked to Bo. And this is the conversation we had. And this is Nick Flanagan Again Weekly. I'm Nick. I was in Montreal. As I said earlier, it was really fun. I got to hang out with my friend Andrew and uh, my friends Roy and Hannah. And we just... Uh, I ate smoked meat. I did a little stand-up. I had some bagels. I went to Cafe Olympico and I had strong coffee. I went to Cafe Social and I had strong coffee. I... Uh, flew there and back like a man, like an adult. And overall, it was just a really good time. And I spoke French and I bought a copy of NHL 94 for Super Nintendo for $5. So, wow, what a list of things to have happen. I have, I mean, Montreal is just very odd. It's uh, beautiful. Um, it's, it's, they, they maintain the integrity of the city's look, which is a wonderful thing. And people are pretty nice. And if you say, oh, wait, instead of we, oui, they respect you so much. Cause that's a Quebecois way of saying yes. Oh, wait. And yeah, I posted, um, video of my interview with, uh, uh, well, my podcast that Andrew played guitar behind um, at uh, my Instagram, which is just my name, Nick Flanagan, uh, IGTV, and it actually, um, a bunch of people watched it, so you can watch it there if you want. And, of course, if you want to help out with the podcast, subscribe, rate, review, go to patreon.com slash Nick Flanagan. Hang out with me. Spend some time. I had a great show at the Transact last night. It was just wonderful and with Kurt Newman, who's been on the podcast a lot. And um, Cassie Cow, a hilarious comic, will probably be back on this show soon. And finally, I'm doing a show at the Transact again with Ale Sr. And I'm assuming Kurt Newman on the 12th of May, 3 p.m. So if you're in Toronto, that's something fun to do. All right. Here's my talk with Bo. Enjoy the talk with Bo. Bo, Bo, Bo. Bo Martin is here. Hi. <laughs> Bo is a child of the 90s, I guess. Yeah. And Bo and I, we were in a film together. We were, I think, in a, a couple films. We were I don't in know. two films together. Bo is an actress. You're an actress. What else? Tell me about yourself, Bo. I don't want to. I don't want to put you in a box. It's a box for bows. <laughs> uh, just, just me and the other bows, all in a box. Tell me about bows. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm an actor. Um, that is my. I think you're a very talented actor. Thank you. Thanks. Um, you're welcome. I. It's funny. Sometimes I still. When it's like somebody identifies me as an actor, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> right. Someone on the street says, Bo. Well, no, not necessarily like someone points me out in a, in a <laughs> crowd or, or whatever. That's, um, oh. I, I mean, like, it's sort of like, like when someone's like, oh, and, and right. so, and so, like when someone is introducing you. This is Bo. She's an actor. Yeah. And then you go, I am an actor. Yeah. It's kind of, it's sort of funny because, like, I've, I think I've gone through so many different, um, things and continue to adopt so many different um whether they're hobbies or or interests that i it i never really feel like i identify with one solely but it's like an aspect of what i do this is something i've noticed with you both 
I've known you for some time now, probably maybe six or seven years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I know it's some time. Yeah. It's not necessarily a lot of time, not necessarily a little time. It's just it feels some like time. it's been time. It has been time. Sometimes I think it's been my whole life. But it's been seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Seven <laughs> years. Good luck in our case. And we did readings uh, in the movie Every Day is Like Sunday, which you were in. You were yeah. the love interest in. I was. The love interest of comedian David Deneen Porter. Yeah. Very interesting pairing, you and David. <laughs> the director of uh, D- Diamond Tongues and, and uh, Every Day is Like Sunday, Sunday Pavan Mundi, who, di- who actually designed the current graphics for uh, uh, like the logo and, and photo combo for uh, this podcast. Really? Yes. That's amazing. It is. He, uh, he has a knack for putting people together romantically in his films that uh, literally make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was married in the movie The Sundowners to Kara G. We're, oh, actors. Kara. She, uh, I was to... on the same show as her last year, uh, The Expanse. Oh, that's cool. You were on that show. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a fun show. What did, what did you what did you play? Um, I, I played this this character named Evita, who's sort of the um, she's a belter, if you know what that is, like a uh, singer, <laughs> not that kind. A, a belter. These are these are a people who who live on the on the belt in, in space, and um, I see. They. They they have a really distinct accent. It was really interesting playing that character. Um, but my character Evita is the sort of because it's based on books, right? Okay. It's sort of like Romeo and Juliet of space. Um, so her boyfriend Mineo um, is the one who well, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. If they well, you don't it. have to spoil but, it, but they you know what what he does, what he gives of himself is. Um, changes the game in, in the series uh so yeah that was a lot of fun and that was interesting feedback from from like the internet world yeah was that your first true exposure to being in a sci-fi where people are invested and they want they're like oh who is bo martin plays this belter and uh <laughs> I drew this picture of Bo. Here's a, <laughs> here's a drawing I did of Bo. I hope you like it. it kind of, yeah. It, there was, um, it. I started to get like friends would message me, um, like links to like Reddit threads about uh, me. I think and, I found and, one. Really? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I googled you one time. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it was like, it was like I had some picture of you, and it was like, yeah. She, she, I think it was it was objectifying you. Yeah, there there's there's been that. Um but the, I think the funniest the funniest one mm-hmm. was um a, a a photo of me and you know like some some lewd comments blah 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 and then um a comment saying I thought that was Rami Malik in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> And like I, I love Rami Malek. He's amazing. Was he in One Direction? No. So Rami Malek is the lead in uh, yes, Mr. In, Robot. In oh, in Mr. Robot, but also in the Bohemian Rhapsody. Film. Yeah, yeah. He plays. Uh, he plays the the guy. Himself. Is his brother Zane? I know it. No. From One Direction. No, is he really? I don't know Zane. Some of these people are related to each other, and you don't know. Like there was someone I found out was. Uh, Related to the guy from uh, not One Direction, but the other big British band. Not take that either. I, I actually don't even know One Direction, to be honest with you. So. Liam, like Thor. Yeah, Liam Hemsworth's brother is Chris Hemsworth. Liam oh, Hemsworth was yeah. Miley Cyrus's boyfriend. Got it. So, you know, you find out something new every have, single minute. I mean, they have the same last name. Well, you know, but so do you and and uh, Sir George Martin. No, that's with an I. Martin. But did you make yours be spelled that way? No, that's that's how, how it is. It is. Yeah, it's like uh, it's it's Polish, and uh, I mean, I shortened it. It was Martinovska. It's something to do with you know the god of war. And what is Bo short for? Bo's my mom's name. It's short for your mom's name. No, it's just Bo. 
if you could have a different name yeah. first and last, what would it be? Um, hmm. No, I really like the name. Bo? Vera. Oh, I like that. Vera. Vera, Vera River. Vera Rivers. Vera Rivers. I like that. That's, That's pretty. Right. Yeah, Vera Rivers. I'm trying to think what that would be. That might be a real estate agent. Yeah, I could be a real estate agent. Yeah, the like high powered real estate. Yeah, like I would, I don't know. I Vera Rivers would sell tiny houses. Yes. And she'd get so much pleasure staging them. Yeah. You know, you ever think about that staging a home? Staging a tiny house? Or a big house. Yeah, but I, I don't think Vera Rivers would do that. I well, for Vera so Rivers for, would be focused on on her um, her niche. Let's walk through staging for a moment. I've never a done house. it. <laughs> do you have a uh, when you stage a home? Do you do you, do you have like a how, like a company you call and they say I need a cuckoo clock, uh, <laughs> I need a rocking chair, and I need a really good family photo, and then they go, "We'll be there in two days." Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the, it's, they probably have like a, a warehouse. Yes, and uh, they have all this all this stuff, and they they keep like families there um, against their will. Probably, <laughs> I don't I don't know how that works, but imagine <laughs> it's terrible because well, we were just talking about the Second World War, so we have some <laughs> idea. How that, works. That, that explains my slightly <laughs> dark mood. <laughs> are you feeling dark no it's just you know what it is today is i uh, well first of all tomorrow's a full moon i think and around mm. full moons what's we're a little bit everyone's a little bit you know on edge yeah funky a little bit, well, a little bit. but i mean it's it's oh. that but we're experiencing a bit of a uh a, a cold snap or maybe this is what happens in canada and it's i forgot freezing so. yeah me too me too yeah, you're back here. I've been gone. You've been gone. So. How long were you gone for? Like six months. Wow. So you actually kind of skipped spring and summer here. No, no. I. Oh, you came back? I came back. You came back when? Um, I mean, I, I was sort of... It depends on where where from. I was in living in the jungle for like four months. Borneo? Uh, no, not Borneo. But... Uh, um, in Central America, in Costa Rica, mostly. And then, um, then I spent some time in Hawaii and then, um, came back to Canada for a week. And then I went right back to Costa Rica and then I, <laughs> and then, uh, um, I came back for Tribeca. That's what that was. Yeah. Why were you, de- why'd you go to Tribeca? Uh, I had a film premiere there. It's called State Like Sleep. Um, is that the one with Aaron Sorkin? No, that was Molly's Game. That was right. That's a famous movie, Molly's Game. <laughs> that was uh, that that premiered while I was away, actually. Oh, that's why I came back for the week to to come back and like I saw my parents and we we went and saw, saw the movie because they hadn't seen it Molly's yet. Game. Yeah, I that's remember cool. seeing that with them in, in theaters, and um, that was fun. Tell but, me about. Your part in Molly's game because I want to make a point to see Molly's game. I have not oh, seen enough so bow. It's such a tiny part, and I'm wearing a, a wig. I play this this uh, girl that works at a club who works with Jessica Chastain, and Jessica Chastain's character comes back um, after you know being, I guess, fired from you know or, or quitting, depending on how you look at it. Um, this place and. She, she tries to bribe me to get clients to come from the club that we used to work at together to her new club. Is um, it a nightclub? It, like an underground gambling thing. Oh, it was based on a true story. Right. Molly's game. Now yeah. I remember the ads for that. But yes, yeah, but that's not, but that wasn't Tribeca. That was a um, state like sleep. Yeah. Tell me about sleep. State sleep. like sleep. You know, De Niro is getting divorced. Cool. I mean, I, I'm, I'm I hope that's good for him. Do you think he's going to make more or less movies now? Uh, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you go, you go, you get divorced. It's like, what are you going to do? Do you think they got the divorce because, and I think the answer is still going to be, I don't Wait, know. Wait, how do we get talking about De Niro? I, I he does the Tribeca that. Film Festival. Oh, got it. I was like, am I missing something here? No, no. Got it. No, I'm I'm missing. 
yeah, certain I'm, parts I'm of my brain. It's okay. You and can. allow me to <laughs> stay on track with okay. what you're saying. So every once in a while, I'll throw you a curveball. Yeah. You'll hit it out of the park. No, I was actually, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't meet him there. Um, I'm sure he was there. Hey. I hope he's, hey. he's doing great. I'm Bold. sure he's a nice man. One of the first movies I ever got cast in um, called Idol's Eye mm -hmm. uh, was with Robert Pattinson and Robert De Niro. And they ended up having creative differences, the producers and the um, and and the director. And so they, they parted ways while, you know, the day before we were about to shoot. So that never got made. Oh, you know, I remember when that happened. That seemed like it was very difficult for you. For me? It seemed like you were excited. And then oh, it got, yeah. It I got was, ended. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was De Niro. Yeah. That's so great. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that was like literally one of the first movies I've ever been cast. Yeah, I, I remember. was so excited. <laughs> it was like shortly after the Every Day is Like Sunday experience. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to this the stay early like days, sleep? but oh. first, but first the state sure. like sleep thing. Tell me about it. How did it come about? What is it? How long has it been out? How many stars do you give it? <laughs> so it, it's, uh, it has been picked up for distribution with the orchard. So I imagine I'll be hitting theaters at some point, but, um, it was a really, really cool movie and I'm really proud of it. Um, Meredith Dan Luck directed it. She's a superstar director and she also wrote it with um sundance institute i believe and um what do you mean she wrote it with them like they have a like a, a lab kind oh of i see yes yeah yes, yes. That a lot of the festivals have that sort of thing. sure yeah and uh yeah it, it's a great great crew great cast uh michael shannon and katherine watterson and uh luke evans are in it just really fun humans and it takes place in and across the u.s and belgium and it was a lot of fun and it was so so strange i had been i went to belgium right like i i had won this contest what? to belgium i know it was just it was funny why did you win a contest to go to belgium because i don't know i don't know my well, life did you weird. enter it yeah it was really weird one night i came home and um i, I used to live with this with a roommate on the the harbor front and um she was really into contests yeah they're smart to enter I mean, I don't, it's not my thing. It's not really my thing, to be honest with you. But it was, it was like almost midnight. And she's like, you, you got to enter this thing. It's this, you just take a picture of a, a unique Canadian gift. It's with Brussels Airlines. And, and if you win, you win a trip. And she took like a sort of blurry photo of like a Tim Hortons cup. <laughs> and <laughs> like, that's, I mean, cool. Uh, and that was, and, um, the I mean, fact it's it was, Canadian. And the fact it's blurry is unique because it's it makes artistic. you think it's some sort of like naturally blurry cup, which you don't really see all the time. Well, I mean, I think it was it was dark in the apartment and stuff. And and um and then I, I went into my room and I was like, what the hell is a Canadian gift? Do I have maple syrup? What do I have? And I remembered that I had this pouch with dollar bills from the 70s that my dad gave me like, like canadian it. dollar bills or two cool. and two dollar bills remember we used to have two dollar bills yeah where they they were sort of a light red yeah exactly yeah. and these ones were in mint condition and i i had this great light and i put them on this pretty oak desk and i laid them out and uh snapped a photo put it for the filter mm, that's <laughs> your style that's <laughs> that's my style and uh lo and behold i i won the damn thing she didn't win but i took her Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. So that was, it was so great. That's was great. Because it was probably a flip of the coin between yours and hers pictures. You know what? I, who knows? It's, do you, what the, the truth is, is that there probably just wasn't anybody else's photo like mine, whereas there are a lot of people that entered with Tim Horton's paraphernalia. Yeah. So it's not like, the most unique Canadian object, let's face it. Maybe not, but it's pretty canadian yes unique but now it's all over the yeah continent yeah i see what you mean thank you i appreciate you seeing what i mean <laughs> now okay we're talking about photos so yeah instagram you can follow bo on instagram at bo uh, martin yeah just that's instagram it. uh now bo you've you you know after we did this every day is like sunday film i feel like you you always had a fun 
zany sense of humor on your Instagram and your Facebook. <laughs> For a long time, I was quite entertained by it, and I, I think that was why I always, I always took a liking to to Bo. The entity that is Bo. We've all <laughs> we've we've tried to find ways to make ourselves <laughs> go viral, and, and so far, no luck. But this could be the time. However, I'm not trying to make myself go. <laughs> I know. I mean, you and I were trying to do goofy things together. Oh, oh really yeah. Matter. Remember we did that yeah. little... Yeah, 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 yeah. We tried to make a funny Instagram video in the park. I mean, I, I don't know what you mean tried. We did. We, we made did make, funny. but I, I don't know if we ever put... What Did we put it on Instagram? I put it on Instagram. Actually, it was a Vine, I think. Yes, it was a Vine. Oh, my God. Vine was fun. What happened to Vine? Was it The there? guys from Vine started the HQ trivia app, That's which my friend Scott hosts. Yeah. But Vine is a lot less stressful than HQ. You know, Vine, Vine was pretty stressful, I guess, but I, Vine was probably the funniest thing, like the most laughs per second than out of. Is HQ like the game? Yeah. It's the, tr- the, the live <laughs> trivia game. I was on a date like uh-huh. several months ago and we were in the car. We were like, we were going somewhere and he he had to stop everything and play this game that I'd never heard of ever in my life. And I just sat there and I was like, cool. And like, I like, I love trivia. Like I, I'm really good at it, mm-hmm. but he had to stop everything. And did he include you in the trivia? Well, I think I helped him, but how far did he get? Uh, he, I, I don't know how this works. I don't know how it works. I don't know how far you go. I think it was like five or six rounds. I think he got like, I think he won like four and then he got, he got yeah. one wrong. Yeah. The questions are, they get harder uh, with each round. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think they were that hard. But... And, and you have, I didn't know you're good at trivia. Can you tell me a piece of trivia right now? I mean, it's kind of like asking a comedian to tell hey, a, be, a be joke, funny. but yeah. at the same time, it's more like telling a person who says they know a lot of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> proof that they know trivia oh man well, what's your area of expertise my my area of expertise yeah, do you know like film i think i think i know a lot of random things so and like that's i like a lot of what is a dinner fork what's the difference between a dinner fork and a dessert fork <sighs> what what Aren't there two different types of fork? I don't come from money, Nick. I don't know these <laughs> Well, you seem to have done pretty well for oh, yourself. Oh, God. I, I mean, you eat with the fork you, you have. I agree with you. If I'm looking in that <laughs> okay. drawer, and it's just as whatever the clean fork is, no size needed. Ew. But sometimes it looks silly yeah. eating a giant steak with a tiny fork. So I think that's common sense. Like, I wouldn't, at a dinner, I wouldn't pick up the giant fork and eat a tiny you know, whatever it was that I was eating. So creme brulee with like a steak knife. I'm not a savage. I'm going to take this as you answering the trivia question correctly. (laughs) (laughs) So you were, you were a zany, funny. I always appreciate your jokes. They always showed to me a sort of love of life, a strangeness and sense of humor (laughs) I appreciated it. And then. And then what happened? Oh, God. I feel like it started getting trippy. Started getting metaphysical. Suddenly, I was seeing a lot of these pictures of you by waterfalls. (laughs) Suddenly, I was seeing all these pictures of you doing strange yoga. Strange yoga. In exotic places. What what strange yoga? Not strange, but maybe uh, difficult yoga. For my, by my standards, I can do downward dog, child pose. I can do duck. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what that is. I don't know which one duck is. Yeah, is that when you just you lie down and you're holding yourself and rocking back and forth? <laughs> oh, the massage. That oh. one. I, like. I don't know if that's duck. I can do uh, calma. <laughs> that's where you just kind of turn yourself into a sort of a calma. Yeah, you know, punctuation the, yoga. Yeah, I, I, grammatical yoga. Yeah. Mind yoga. I mean, yoga means uh, union. It's a union of spirit. But it also 
A union is also something that is a unified means of protecting the worker, the proletariat. Sure, absolutely. I I hope the unions um, promote yoga. (laughs) The Teamsters. Yeah. Jimmy Hoffa should have done more yoga. He might have been able to get out of that box. Yeah. They put him in. (laughs) Aww. I'm not saying at the end of his life. I just think yeah. he was in a box as the head of the team's tree. <laughs> kind of puts you in a box. I don't know a lot about Jimmy Hoffa. He was he was the criminal guy, right? He was connected to criminals, apparently. He disappeared. He was never seen again. There are two movies about him. Recently, one came out starring John Travolta. That yeah. everyone made is making fun of this movie. It's not good. That's what people are saying. The other one was... It's hard in, to make a good movie. It is hard to make a good movie. Isn't that funny? Isn't that a funny thing? You want to be in a good movie, and yet uh, it's hard. Just getting in a movie is hard. Then you're in the movie. Turns out not the greatest movie. What are you supposed to do? Not be proud? Not spend the money? Throw the money away that you got paid? (laughs) I don't think so. I'm spending that money or I'm saving it for a rainy day. Yeah, you save that money. Yeah, but make it. Make it into something positive. Light coin. Turn it into a Bitcoin. Now, you seem maybe like a crypto type. I mean, especially once the waterfall <laughs> picture started happening. It was around the time crypto took off. I mean, with all due respect, I was, I feel sort of misunderstood. I've always been into waterfalls. I've <laughs> always loved. I definitely to am. Strange yoga. I am putting you in a box. <laughs> I, the box I'm putting you in is that you were funny. And then you were mystical. But what you were saying is, at the same time you were funny, you were also mystical. Yeah, always. Uh, I I think that's that that all of us are walking a spiritual path. Just some of us are uh, on, you know, some of us are wearing shoes. Some of us are wearing steel toe boots. So I'm wearing uh, sort of house shoes. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. With socks. It's uh, everyone's on a different sort of thing, and um, I mean, I. Yeah, I just uh, I've done a lot of cool traveling the last couple of years and um, gotten in touch with myself a little bit more and and, and with nature. Um, I don't think that made me less um, funny. It, it did. I don't know. <laughs> I think it made me less self-deprecating because I, I realized that although I can make fun, I can take a joke and I can make fun of myself. I'm not um, in this like darker headspace where I would, where I was like super sarcastic before or, you know, attracting like, (laughs) I don't know, weird things happening to me all the time. Are you saying that I got to know you at a time when you were attracting odd things to your orbit and that now (laughs) there's no use for me in your orbit anymore? (laughs) I think, I think what I'm saying is that I'm supposed to, uh, I feel like I've learned a lot um, about the world and I, I find I find the world very funny. Trust me, I find it very, very funny. I mean, it's a great comedy. It's a great play. Do you think it's funny that porpoises had, have all those cups inside of them when they wash? They have cups? Well, what? a whale washed on shore and it had 115 cups in its stomach. No, that's terrible. Okay, that's I'm just checking terrible. to make sure. It sounds like you are in a better mind state then. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't have thought that was funny then. When do, was there any point in your no, life? No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's uh, I think it's absolutely um, horrible. Do you think that environmentalism is uh, moving way slower than it should be? That's what that's why I think. Um, I feel like we border we borderline missed the boat there. I don't think we've miss the boat i think we're in a very critical period the boat is the people are putting the luggage on the boat yeah the the, the people are are trying to save the luggage rather than you know oh <laughs> why are we even a, putting luggage on why? the boat that's what you're saying right well um children are in the luggage though i think i think we're, we're struggling keep... with a lot of ignorance particularly in in the west and people not taking responsibility for themselves. Um, I, I know a lot of my friends said, you know, going, just go to, go to the, the West coast of the U S or, or like Florida, anywhere in the U S on spring break. And you'll see why this is happening. Yeah. You know, I feel like the they're just like, 
finding the whales and just putting the cup right in their mouth. <laughs> like they think they're healthy. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're trying to they're like, you have, look, the, have You look beer. like you need a drink, whale. Yeah. <laughs> Do whales drink tequila? I don't think so. During spring break, the whales kind of do this like really cool, like almost like a water ski (laughs) up to the shore, you know, like when a cool guy on water skis comes and the whale's like, what's up, guys? And then they'll like have this drink and they're like, I really don't want it. And then they're like, you gotta have it. Yeah, peer pressure is uh, terrible. I know, especially interspecies peer pressure pressure yeah well we're shape of water type of stuff well we're doing it to ourselves you know we are we're peer pressuring ourselves right now you know the pressure no wonder you wanted to get out of the country things the pressure here is it's too much and the west oh the west the west (laughs) thinks it's the only direction but there's all (laughs) kinds of other directions you got north yeah you want to say them with me east east south northwest Southeast, Southwest. Uh, Southwest. <laughs> That's it, I think. Yeah. yeah. There's no East, West, or North, South. They haven't yeah. figured out how to make those be directions yet. No, there's uh, there's up. The movie. <laughs> there's the movie up. The only good thing to come out of the West is the movie up. Was that really the West? I thought it was a studio in France. I'm not sure. Oh, salut, Monsieur Asner. <laughs> On voulait que tu, yeah. <laughs> tu es très triste parce que ton <laughs> <laughs> madame, how do you say wife, ton mari est, uh, uh, oh, et tu veux <laughs> prendre le ballon. <laughs> exactly. That's how it went down. Yeah. And, uh, and then, then they discovered the whales um all the whales oh it's so sad i mean you know i mention it i've mentioned so many terrible things just over the course of our uh chat which is nowhere near over by the way <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh <laughs> well all the terrible things we can talk about nice things I, I didn't get to see it but at tiff this year um they it's the Toronto International Film Festival for anybody listening in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> um, there's they they have this film premiere called Anthropocene, and and I think it's ah playing. they've been playing that at the theater there. Should I go see it? Yeah, so I mean it's it'll definitely, uh, from what I've heard, make you understand the the depths of of the the hole in which humanity is is digging itself in, um, and it's destructive force um uh, on ourselves and the impact that we've you know the devastating impact we've had on our our earth for so many years but mostly just over the last like 150 years industrial revolution baby yeah Yeah. i hope nine inch nails was worth it (laughs) you know what i'm saying i hope kmfdm and ministry were worth it (laughs) i hope that this mortal coil or no that's not an industrial band (laughs) You see what I'm saying. You see the joke. I see the joke. I see the joke. Not a self-deprecating joke either. No. I'm I'm trying to stop those too because I'm proud of who I am. I think it's a it's I you know it's it's interesting that you that you mentioned that that you uh, you saw that shift as in terms of my my personality in terms of my uh, what I share. I saw it on social media. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if I I've always knowing you. You've always been a multifaceted person. Even sure. even your funny weirdness, you know, always there were other things that I knew were happening in your brain. An ambition to be stronger, mm. learn more, mm. act, do more acting. It seems like you've pursued the craft, done your best with it, tried to be yeah. a different, open to playing different roles. Yeah, it's been a lot of um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I got to explore a, a new character recently on this new show for uh, Netflix called V Wars. V Wars. Yeah. So we just finished shooting uh, season one, and uh, I can't really say much about it yet. But I play a character named Elise Chambers, um, and she's she's really quirky. Mm-hmm. and um has a lot of responsibility and maybe shouldn't but i really enjoyed playing her and uh, yeah that, that should be coming out in the spring 
Well, let's talk about this. <laughs> I think we, we just did. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I said this, but I, I actually meant the next topic. Okay. Which is, you know, you've been acting now. For how long have you been? It, 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 how um, long? When, six, was it a childhood years. ambition? No. No. I mean... Six there, years. I met you seven years ago in a movie. <laughs> you can't. I mean, really? Was it? So, oh, God, I guess I've been doing it. So, I literally, that was that was the beginning. That was it. I just showed up. and. Yeah, that was a cool thing about that Every Day is Like Sunday movie. Is like, literally, they were just like, oh, no, the lead just quit. And all the other <laughs> actors just quit. I think I was the only actor in that movie because like, I had done one movie before that. David has actually been in a couple of very, very indie films. If you he? look, at, Yeah, he was on in some movie called... Uh, girl napped or chick napped or something david deneen porter by the way if you're listening to this uh just to tell you about my friend david he's a comedian who came up with all the sort of lap sabbath type of comedians in toronto he did a very memorable short uh comedy short called the brondell's world that i recommend you find on youtube then he wrote on the james corden show for a minute moved to la he's been working on the justin roman magic show there and uh uh, I'm never going to see him again. Is it a magic show? It's a magic show. Yes, he's a magician, Justin Woolman. Mm. Yeah, so it's a magic show, and David's like one of the main writers for it. How do you write for a magic show? It's like kind of a comedy magic show. It's on Netflix. So is the joke that there's no magic? <laughs> the joke, it's like a, it's a very meta magic show where okay. like you watch it and then it's like there's no, it's a sitcom got it there's no magician there's no magic it's just it's not david blaine no it's just that show with sam elliott and ashton kutcher yeah i only watch real magic so oh chris angel <laughs> you seem like the type to maybe have <laughs> hung out with chris angel or something i've never i've ne never met him i mean i wouldn't be opposed to it i'd like to learn some cool illusions Why tell not? me about stay to sleep for a second here like what? You hung out with Sh Michael Sh Mike Shannon in this movie? Oh, yeah, Mike. Mike Shannon. Is that what people call him, Mike Shannon? <laughs> Michael Shannon? Uh, I never called him Michael Shannon before. I just always said hi or Mike. Or, yeah. He seems cool. Yeah, he's he's really cool. He seems like a... I've seen him in a few movies. I saw him. I loved him on... Uh, I loved him in season one and two of boardwalk empire he was always good on boardwalk empire but i feel like the first few seasons gave him more of a depth and then he just started kind of they kind of started bouncing him around the world mm. there and it was kind of getting confusing yeah did you watch boardwalk empire no but you were rolling with me on it pretty well yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it yeah i think it came out at a time where i was uh, really into what which show was I obsessed with at the time? There was there was like so much space. Ducktales. Yeah, <laughs> Ducktales. I do remember Ducktales. There's a reboot. Fact, there. What? Yeah, they reboot. Oh, actually, yeah. My friend Eric Bowser's on it. I think. That's cool. Yeah, he's a, a really talented voice actor in LA. Um, super cool. If you ever get to hang out with him, he's... I don't get to hang out with anybody. <laughs> I invited you here just to get a chance to hang out with someone. Aw, well, we're here. We're here. Do you regret it? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, what's what, what made you leave the country? What made you want to come back? Well, so I actually, um, after Tribeca, after the film, uh, film premiere of State Like Sleep, I was shooting a movie in Cuba mm -hmm. um, called Perpetual Motion. And um, that was in, I think, like March or something mm -hmm. or April. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I came back and then I got busy and I was shooting the Netflix series. And mm -hmm. That's why I was in Toronto. Um, and I was planning on, on going away uh, to travel a bit again, but I just got cast in another film. So I'll be shooting a movie in Cuba again. Wow, Absolutely. so you've been on a real roll, real roll, roll. You know what I'm saying? You're just playing roles. Yeah, that's it's fun. Has it been about three, four years of that now? Three uh, years? Yeah, I mean, uh, if, you know, with with acting, it, it's up and down in terms of your work, and um, 
it's definitely been a lot busier for me the last few years. It's a pretty good streak. Yeah, it's been cool. I had a lot of I had a lot of fun working on uh, a show called Designated Survivor. Right. Last year too. Um, Which one? That's uh, who's who's the lead in Designated Survivor? It's uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. Got any Sutherland stories? You call him Keef? <laughs> no, I never called him Keef. I just called him Keefer. Chief Keef Sutherland. I don't know if you'd like that. Uh, but yeah, no, he's that's he's that really shit nice. he don't like. He's a musician. He's yes, really, he has a band. Really talented. Yeah, is he tall? Um, I mean, everyone's taller than me. How tall are you? <laughs> I'm like five four, five three. Did you ever want to grow? Did I was just I just showed up like this. And... <laughs> you were born five three, <laughs> like Athena. Yeah, yeah. I, I come from a, a long line of very tall people. I don't. Do you really? I don't know what how this happens. Yeah, Polish I, tall people. Yeah, Vikings, really, right? That's I don't what... know. Are they Vikings? Polish people? Some, some of them. So I was I born on that. A, well, where I was born, it's there's a lot of Vikings. What's the name of where you were born? It's called Świnoujście. It's a little island. An island off of Poland. Yeah, in the Baltic Sea. It's probably beautiful over there. Yeah, it is. It's gorgeous. Though. You've been. Uh, yeah. Because you were born there. I was there. born 5'4 uh, in that island. And do you think it was the <laughs> air that made you grow so fast? It's, it could have been radiation. I don't know. Did your mom feed you? Did your mom feed you plants? Is that why you're into the plant based healing? Because instead of. <laughs> baby food it was just ground up plant uh did i eat dirt is that what you're asking uh i wonder what my mom fed me i think like a traditional polish thing that people feed their children is like kluski na mleczku which is these like um they put like they boil dough Ooh. in milk whoa yeah and then it kind of curdles in this like it 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 cooks. Curls. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. English isn't my first language. I don't know. I would not know that English was not your first language. <laughs> Couldn't tell me. Well, it's and so yeah, it that was that was the thing that I remember. Can you say holistic treatment to, uh, to, in Polish? I mean holistic yeah, well, well, I like that. Yeah. But um, holistic doesn't mean health. Around. It actually means sort of like all forms, right? Yeah, holistic. Because that's what I believe in. Holistic. What about this as a form of treatment? Okay. So (laughs) picture this. You're on the ocean. Okay. The beach on the ocean. Okay. There's a cot laid out. Okay. And uh, (laughs) uh, cot's there. Okay. You lie down on the cot. Oh, there's a cat. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I'm, I got... Oh, I have to tell me again. Hey, cat. Nanny, do you just want to come up? I think he wants you to pick him up. You can if he likes that. No, he, he doesn't mind just being picked up. He's kind of into it, frankly. Try it. He likes having his mane roughed. Meow. Meow. We're just... We're going to talk for a while. Go on. Meow. Do you ever play a vampire lady? Have I? Um, no, I don't think I have. That's next. That's next for Bo. I'm yeah. gonna write. I'm gonna write you the vampire lady movie. I mean, How about comedy? Any comedy? I think everything I do is funny. Well, me too. But ain't comedy? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd love to do comedy. I mean, I. Sometimes I like do drop in, drop in classes at the Second City because I really like improv, um, and I studied improv before. Um, I, and this is probably like I don't know why I'm having like a hard time admitting it because it's like a, a secret pleasure, but like musical improv, like I freak out. I love it. Let me tell you about the place <laughs> I went to. It is called <laughs> La Vignon. <laughs> It's a bridge in France, and I had so much fun living in France. Yeah, like that, but just prettier. but more more jokey and prettier. Did you say? Yeah. Well, they're very talented. A lot of these musical improvisers and singing, they haven't wrecked their voices. 
like I did. What'd you wreck your voice with? Punk rock singing. Oh. I'm if you sorry. could hear through these earphones, the cat uh, purring. Right. You want to hear it? I can hear it. I can hear the purring. Hey, what did, what did they purr again? Because you're pissing off. No, no. Like there's a there's a reason for it. I think it's like I think it's a gland or something. Okay. No, I don't know. Like a rattlesnake? Because rattlesnake, like do we call it a rattlesnake like that they're like we that they're feeling threatened, but isn't it kind of the same thing? Both rattling. I know that if you pet him too much, he tries to hit you. Pet rattlesnakes? <laughs> Have you ever met a snake you didn't like? No. I love snakes. Do you? Yeah, I love... Do you have a snake tattoo? You seem like you might have a snake tattoo. I'd like one. Okay, where? Uh, how about right here on my bicep? That's a pretty tough one. My bicep? Yeah. What's the, what's the bow exercise regimen? <laughs> generally. <laughs> I was joking about the bicep, by the way. I don't know where I would get a snake Do you tattoo. Go to but, maybe on your upper back? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's hard as an actor considering placement of tattoos because it's such a pain to get them covered up um but when the time's right if it calls do you think this is a renaissance um for female actors to get roles that are not demeaning yeah i think so i mean things are things are changing there are more roles for women who are you know, over 20. Right. <laughs> like it's, I think things are changing for sure. You can, you can see that you can see the evidence of that. And I think that's directly a response to, uh, Wilmer Valderrama. Yeah. And Futurama <laughs> and, um, also women being in the director's chair, being the writers, uh, being the, the people who, who bring the work to life. And maybe also being the audience. You know what I mean? I, mean, I feel like there was, but I don't think that was acknowledged as much in in sci-fi and and uh, action movies. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm wrong about everything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, you were you were asking me something about a routine. What routine? Oh. Oh, you said you loved musical improv. No, you were asking me. Oh, you were asking well, me about my workout routine. Right, yeah. That's. Um, that's a secret my secret workout routine the secret workout <laughs> uh, like let's say you started a, a fitness website right what would you emphasize oh my god i'm covered in cat hair. yeah you are <laughs> um i i'm really into olympic weightlifting that's cool and uh pilates and crossfit those are probably my crossfit yeah it's a tough one yeah, the boulders. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, it's great though. It's really it's really great. I mean, it's, it's essentially a sport. Like you, you have a community and people are really supportive and um it's fun to work out in in, in that group atmosphere, doing hard things together. It's really cool. And then taking what you learned and applying that on your own time too. I feel like I've become a much better athlete and stronger in I don't know, my confidence is, is significantly higher. It's been really cool exploring that. So we, we didn't really get to the bottom of why a Bo Martin would up and leave and go on these spiritual journeys. What to, what made what kick started that decision? How did it come about? What happened? When did this interest begin? Um I think that's a that's a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just start with the one where it's like, how did you wind up um, going I mean, on this particular? What, what was it? Two years ago, this all started. A year ago. I mean, that, a year and a half ago. I mean, when I don't I don't know how you pinpoint one thing. Well, the travel. When did I when did I start traveling? The day I was born. Okay, but that's I'm not yeah. asking when you started traveling. I, I'm trying to. Well, I think you did though, so it's that's hard <laughs> for me to say. It's like when do you pinpoint what cause and effect? Um, if you're asking me when I left, yeah, that was that was last year, and I, I decided I needed to dig deeper. 
um, and explore. And I, I went on this journey and I've been, been living as a nomad for several years now. So I've, you know, this isn't new to me. This isn't surprising to anyone that knows me. Yeah. Um, and I was a flight attendant many years ago. Like this right, is right. You were a flight attendant. Of. Right. So, um, this is, this is sort of my, my life. Um, but yeah, the living in Costa Rica for a while and, and, you know, sort of plant medicine and hippie communities, finding my, you know, my community and friends who, who also live there now as a, but are from Toronto or in other parts of the world. Um, sort of a lot of strange synchronicity. That's really quite beautiful as well. So you land there, you go to this hippie, what's this hippie place? No, that's not really how that happened. Well, what's, what <laughs> happened when you land? Someone told me that I met a cab driver, an Uber driver in LA once who's from Costa Rica. And he said that uh, when they were children, they used to hunt these uh, turtles and they'd go with the rocks mm -hmm. over the holes. And then when they came out, would they eat them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Make soup of the turtle. Turtle soup. I didn't even know that was a thing. Interesting. It is a thing. Did you see anything like that happening in Costa Rica? Children yeah. feasting on turtles? Uh, no, we didn't. Um, no. What did you see? <laughs> um, I mean, it's a really beautiful country with uh, very, very different climates, uh, different ecosystems in, in different parts of it. So it was really cool. Sometimes you're in the rainforest, sometimes you're in the jungle, sometimes you're in the desert, wow. depending on where you go. Um, it's a really peaceful country with a lot of, um, a lot of good vibes, good energy there. And now you're learning Spanish. But, I mean, I've understood Spanish for many years growing up here and speaking French right? and having lots of friends that speak different languages and uh -huh. being a flight attendant. You get, right. get to use your... Basura. <laughs> right? I know the lingo. Um, you know you know your forks and knives. And <laughs> oh, I know forks and knives and I know that basura means trash. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. what the kids say when they don't like a hip-hop song now. <laughs> basura yeah yeah it's probably not pronounced that way though basura more like that yeah basura well, it depends on how angry you are basura there you go basura <laughs> um but yeah so yeah i'm definitely I'm, I'm learning it from a foundational start in you know not just to speak it but to write it so i've been studying um at the, Sp the spanish center in toronto um because it's it's important to me. I mean, I'm, it's part of my a big part of my life. You're and curious. N no, I'm conscious. It's more than a curiosity. It's just living the thing, right? I mean, if you're if you're, it's more than a curiosity. If you're curious about a, a place you've never been to, you might dip your toe in the water. But when you're living it, I think you're you're just there. A whole foot. Yeah. And water and then the other thing. Yeah. And then the rug. Yeah. I'd, like to... swept from under <laughs> I'd like to visit Peru. Yeah, I've heard Peru's pretty cool. Yeah. But it's it sounds like it's got gotta be a little careful in Peru. Well some hostage taking. I think that it's uh it, it <laughs> I think that you could choose to live in fear and not leave your house and then suddenly go outside and get mugged in Toronto. Um, yeah, but I've hostage never, I, taking. I don't think that's really, I don't think you need to be. I mean, you go to these countries, right? Yeah. And you're in the countries and all the people are there and you go, well, they're here. Well, the, why should I be worried? I mean, there's a bunch of people who live here. This is their lives. If it's, everyone says it's so dangerous, but they're here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fine. I was in Colombia and people were like, they were just like, yeah, it's like this, but it's fine. That being said, some of the poverty you see in, in that side of the world is certainly eye-opening, you know, 
Um, what did it open your eyes to? Open my third eye. Um, what does it just open my eyes to the the depths of poverty that uh, uh, occur in the world? And I mean, I went to Cape Town, and it was just uh, some of the stuff you saw was. Um, it just seemed like it was another level of neglect for whatever reason, you know, um, just probably because of in the infrastructure in a place like that being of a certain way, you know. Well, a lot of it is, you know, it's so easy for us to, to sit here and, and sort of, I'm not saying we're judging, but it's so easy for so many people to judge or to, to feel apart from it but the truth is we're we're all responsible for each other well sure yeah everything that we do here in the west directly affects all sides of the world well and, yeah and um so i'm certainly not separating that poverty yeah. from any other part of like as being some sort of fault of these countries it's it's a whole other thing it's like world economics created this or wars or you know, I greed. mean, in the case of greed, greed, sure. Yeah. I mean, in the case of South Africa, you know, it's it's the apartheid system, I would imagine, plus mass migration due to wars in other places, and it's so it's so so deep. You know, mm-hmm. things are the thing about traveling that I like is just you go, wow, like this world itself, which is just but a speck within this sexy universe is so complicated and layered and there's so much good, so much bad. There's no point in trying to make sense of it. I don't, I I mean, I think that's, that's where we we lose each other is that we we're so, we, we label things. This is good. This is bad. That's what gets us into trouble. But that's what I'm saying. It's all, it's all, it's all just a stew. It is just a, it is a stew. A booyah base. So, <laughs> a goulash. It's a, it's a, a, okay. I mean, yeah. That's not really a stew, is it? I, I don't know. It's, um, is that, that's Hungarian, right? Goulash. But you're a Hungarian, right? I'm not. I'm Polish. You've been there? To Hungary? No. Yeah. I went there once. Yeah. Did you have goulash? I think we did. Yeah. yeah, and then you left. You were like, "That's it. That's all we needed to do." We've come through the garage. Every country, you just want to have that signature food and get the hell out. Yeah. What about when people think poutine is the signature food of Canada? That's, you know, they'll go to like Ottawa. Well, Ottawa, you could get poutine, but they go to Toronto and say, "I tried your poutine." And you go, "What are you talking about? You'd be right. better off getting like pho here." I mean, no one's ever said that to me. Tried your poutine? Yeah, I I don't think I've only ever eaten poutine like once. It was in like Montreal. I have a show and tell. (laughs) (laughs) This is weird. (laughs) So what's this? This is a um what is this? It's uh it looks like a a piece of paper that you might have found outside in someone's recycling box. No. 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 Okay. Well, it's a week. It says it's a weekly planner for the week of, and then it's blank, and um, it's got a, it's got timetables. Right. Up. Hourly and daily. Yeah. It's like a schedule for hours and your days. Yeah. It's it's like an abstract uh, piece of art that's trying to express that time is a construct. It is telling us that time is a construct, but I, I kind of need that sort of structure. What, what do you think of that? Does it make you mad? Make you happy? I, I'm i completely indifferent to it. Okay, let's ask. Typical day for Bo. 7 a.m. on a Monday. <laughs> I'm sleeping. <laughs> 3.30 p.m. on a Thursday. 3.30 p.m. on a Thursday? Yeah. Um, I might be at the gym. Mm-hmm. I might be at the gym. I might be... I don't know, audition. I don't know. Maybe walking a dog. Who knows? Got a dog? No, but sometimes I, I look after a, a dear friend's dog. That's nice. What kind of dog is it? She's a puggle, and her name mm-hmm. is Bailey. She's nine years old, from New York, and blind. What's a puggle? Uh, a beagle a and a pug. That sounds cute. Right? By the way, this is copyright student handouts, Inc., www.studenthandouts.com. Why are you giving a promo? It's fine. 
5 p.m. on a Friday. Hey, for this? Yeah, sponsor. <laughs> Um, 5 p.m. on a Friday. 5 p.m. on a Friday. Um, Sabbath? <laughs> I th- oh, and I'm like, no, Lap Sabbath is on Thursdays. No, I'm talking uh, about the Holy right. Sabbath. No, uh, Friday, honestly, it depends. My my life is, I take it day by day. I don't like to plan things too crazy. That's This is crazy. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, maybe I'm cooking. Maybe you are cooking. <laughs> what about this? The Art of Living, the classical manual on virtue, happiness, and effectiveness. Written by Epictetus. Epictetus. A new interpretation by Sharon LaBelle. An immense dose of Epictetus <laughs> would do us all a great deal of good. Do you want to read a little to I'd us? I'd love to. Okay, so read this one, Never, never Suppress. Did you pick that? Randomly. Okay. Aloud, please. <laughs> Why not? No, I, I was going to. I was just, I was admiring the font. Mm-hmm. Uh, never suppress a general impulse. Follow through on all your generous impulses. Do not question them, especially if a friend needs you. Act on his or her behalf. Do not hesitate. There's an exclamation mark. I feel like I should be yelling. Do not hesitate! (laughs) (laughs) Don't sit around speculating about the possible inconvenience, problems, or dangers. Uh Uh-huh. We were just talking about Peru. I think this is about you. Yeah. As long as don't go don't worry when you go to Peru. The hostage thing. You're fine. Low chance. What do they want from you? What? What are they like? What do they want from you? Just be like, dude, just (laughs) leave me alone. (laughs) Just leave me alone, all right? I'm trying to do my thing over here. Leave me alone. As long you know what as... I mean? Leave me alone? I don't. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as you let your reason lead the way, you will be safe. It is our duty to stand by our friends in their hour of need. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I haven't read these yet, but I have a few pretty serious books of... Uh bond moats from uh, various philosophers. You know, what's, what's funny is that the, I was just looking at the other page beside it mm-hmm. and it says um, the wise person knows it's a fruitless it is fruitless to project hopes and fears on the future. This only leads to forming melodramatic representations in your mind and wasting time. What is a good event? What is a bad event? There's no such thing. What is a good person? The one who achieves tranquility by having formed the habit of asking on every occasion, what is the right thing to do now? So there's nothing good, nothing bad. We're just, but he just said a good person says the right, what is the right thing to do? What is the right, what is the right thing to do? That's, that's just, I, I don't think that's what he's saying. Look, here's something. what, oh, okay. this is a card. Okay. It's a, it's a cable. Board. You know, I don't remember Cable. Cable was a big character in the 1990s. In the, he was the leader of X Force, and he was uh, in the Deadpool 2 film, played by James Garner. Uh, not Josh Rowland, that is James Garner. He's six foot eight. And we all are up, up here. You know? you know, in my head, I feel really tall. Yeah. And um, it's always funny for me to see people see myself in photos with other people because I'm like, I, I don't understand like what, what happened here. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a really weird perspective. Yeah. Like you feel big, but you're little. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't think I'm little. You got the big arms. <laughs> getting jacked. You're getting jacked. You're doing yeah. weight, Olympic weight training and CrossFit. And it's honestly, I just want like really cool triceps. I've always wanted them and I'm getting them. It's like Good. my birthday. Or something. I, I was doing weight training for a minute mildly yeah. it was great i loved it it feels good when you're when you're seeing the progress and yeah you're getting stronger and it all went away yeah so you can't open jars anymore that sucks i opened a jar just today did you let's not underrate my wrist this is why i do it for jars yeah because <laughs> you don't want to depend on some guy to open a jar for you no guy no guys can open jars <laughs> not all guys not all men can I open bet jars Cable could open a jar Look oh i bet he probably could with his mind i think He's he had three... light telekinesis uh, abilities no he he did have a cybernetic arm a yes. leg and an eye so he could probably shoot a laser or something yeah at the jar but then you'd 
you wouldn't be able to have the contents of the jar because they'd probably be everywhere on the floor and it would be a problem. Yeah, but maybe he could cook the contents with the laser. And then you'd eat them off the floor? (laughs) Well, it would be (laughs) sterilized from the heat of the laser. I don't know. He's number 15. What does that mean? Is that like a call sheet? Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, that means he's a pretty big deal because it's like the 15th card in the series. Yeah, so that's, that's out of Spider-Man, Captain America, Thor, the Hulk. Yeah, like but if you're number Wolverine. 15 on any call sheet, you're not that special. Well, I think number 15 <laughs> on the Infinity War call sheet would still be pretty good. It would be like yeah. Batista or whatever. The baseball player? No, <laughs> the wrestler. He played Drax. Yes. What about this? This is the Mindful Way Through Depression by John Kabat-Zinn. Freeing so, yourself from chronic unhappiness. John Kabat-Zinn. Um, the writer of Wherever You Go. There You there Are. You are. There You Are. So I Son-in-law of remember. Howard Zinn. I don't know who Howard is. But I guess you don't remember this, but that time we were on the beach, mm-hmm. you were reading... I think I was wherever reading you wherever go. you go. There you are. Yeah. And I picked it up, but I mean, I didn't read the book. I listened to the audio book mm-hmm. and uh, that was neat. That was incredible. That changed things for me. Yeah. It's a pretty, that's really neat. Um, that's amazing. That makes me so happy. Uh, I mean, I think it was funny. I got this book, the mindful way through depression. I have when I did uh, my first mindfulness course which an ex-girlfriend bought for me in 2011 or 2010 Mm -hmm. as a gift it was at the yoga studio about five minutes from where we were living and i uh yeah i got this yoga course it wasn't a yoga course i took a meditation course for the first time and they gave you this book Mm -hmm. and also a guided meditation cd and this came with the cd as well so they they, it was really a worthwhile class and that was where i learned mindful meditation and um i actually never read the mindful way through depression because i found it stressful you know reading about the feelings of depression and then when i read wherever you go there you are that's a much more uh blissful read if there's a way to put it there because it has really nice poetry excerpts Mm -hmm. and it sort of focuses on the book walden pond um by um thoreau Thoreau, yeah and and he uses such wonderful references and yeah the references are what make it joseph campbell emerson i mean just clarissa pinkle estes who's you know an icon for me all of these writers are, are really incredible um but i i was i don't remember if i had already done my first Vipassana. Right. You've done the silent meditation. Yeah. I've done several of those. Um, I've done the silent but deadly meditation. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that is. But (sighs) so I've done, I've done some of those and and that was really, really helpful. I mean, there was a lot that, that led up to me in my life, you know, going there to, to do that. That's why when you asked me that question earlier about, you know what happened why did you go it's so hard for me to answer because it's like well well, when did when does life begin you know what i mean it's conception it's so, or does it or does it Maybe begin not. when you're just a twinkle in your father's eye or it, it, you does it begin I mean? when you're a twinkle in your father's father's eye exactly we're, we're on this continuum and so it, when you ask it's it's sort of difficult to pinpoint things because we're always just in, in movement. Oh, it still does have the CD. The, the... Wonderful. That's great. But yeah, I really found that that book to be helpful and I've recommended it to several people who've also found it helpful. So you've done a good thing. It's a great start. Is this mine? I don't know why That's you handed it to me. I think it's yours. Okay. Um, that was water for those who aren't watching this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're still, if you're watching this right now, it's live. I don't know how you're doing that. Um, Okay, so that, so that's a great story. Wait, this is live. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's live. Like we're alive doing it. But yeah, we might be dead when yeah, when not. people see it though. But you never know, and that's okay. This is Parappa the Rapper. Yeah, it's a PlayStation game. I remember this. Really fun game. I've never played it. But oh, I remember so it. much fun! So cartoony. Crack, crack, crack the egg into the bowl. Parappa. Should have something else in here. Oh yeah, got more stuff. A lot more stuff. 
Did you just find this? No, I get. I do this. I get, this is what's around the house, you know. And I, so this is what is this? It's a uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and it's the original with uh, these lovely humans. Oh my God! Look at him. Gene Wilder. Yeah. Gene. Something Wilder. He's just got the bluest eyes. Now, on a whirlwind tour of Willie's incredible edible realm of milk chocolate waterfalls, elfish Oompa Loompas, and industrial revolution sized sugar coated creations, one very special boy will discover the sweetest secret of all yeah. a generous, loving heart. The sweetest secret of all is that it's actually based on Dante's Inferno. So it's, it's I guess it is. Hell. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. I never thought of that, but that really is what it is. And it's actually also got elements of. <laughs> It's got, it's got elements of uh, Salem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lot's wife and stuff. And uh, also of Odysseus, which is also a similar story. Or is it Orpheus or Odysseus? I think Orpheus. Yeah, Orpheus. And um, yeah, Orpheus descending. Um, I, knew we, I knew this show and tell would be super fruitful for us. So do you like this film, the original Willy Wonka? I do. I I. What stands out immediately, uh, like, you know, in my head movies, when, when you're looking at something and, and what, what memory pops up is when they're going through that tunnel and that poem that he says. Yes, that's the big one. That's the big one. And that's, yeah. oh, man, so powerful. And you're like, this is a children's thing. And they did. Well, I don't know children. where it's going. But it's beautiful. It's so, so perfect. And the river. That's flowing or whatever. He <laughs> yes. I do not know where it is going. He just died. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, it's. They don't make them like Gene Wilder anymore. Yeah, they do. Who, it's all, it's who's all, like Gene Wilder? We don't roll Gene Wilder. Well, okay, yes, you I guess they to... make them in terms of human makeup. That is true. They no, do make you them have like to... Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, and what so many uh, performers have the the gift to be able to tap into is this childlike innocence of creativity that that is in all of us. It's innate, but but some of us give ourselves permission to explore that. But that's all in us, all of that, and that's that's you know. The way they did this is so beautiful and, and an example of that. That even in that moment where he's kind of being terrifying, there's still this innocent quality that the two are not separate. Well, that's something something that's so fascinating about Will Dahl, right? Because mm-hmm. if you read his book, Boy, about his childhood, it's like here. And he had a very, it sounds like he just had the usual English childhood of his time. Yeah. But it was harsh. You know, lots of beatings, lots of all kinds of stuff. And you see that darkness in all of his children's work. Every single one from the twits to the one where the family gets turned into birds that are then shot down Mm -hmm. uh, by like other family members, I think. (laughs) BFG is like actually a very scary story in, in parts. And uh, even Matilda has elements of that. Yeah. And Miss Bul- Bullworth. Yeah. And, and something like, like Ballsworth. <laughs> something like that. Ball puncher Dick Worth. <laughs> Dick <remember>. Clock. And <laughs> um, uh, yet there is this kind of silliness through it out that's generally really helped by the illustrations, you know, that are, are accompanying most of those books. Yeah. Where, and and uh, it's an interesting thing with him that, that, Again, it kind of goes into this idea that I've been, you know, it's, I don't think at all that, that trauma breeds creativity, but I think that it's interesting the way that it can remain through trauma and then filter. It's, it's almost filtered through it. And so it's an influence on it, but you get through that sewer, like the guys the who the lens yeah like you bust through the lens you're trapped in the camera and get up and get out you're like mm. i got shards of glass in me but i'm i'm out you know well, from the camera lens. You know, we're, we're such creative beings we we express we're constantly expressing and, and as a result of our our lives and the different various experiences we've had that's how we're going to express ourselves but i mean i think trauma 
maybe maybe saying it breeds creativity I think could be most misunderstood, but it certainly can inspire it. I mean it's Well, it's your experience. So sure experience inspires uh, who you are, what you do, how you express yourself. But sometimes trauma can the art that comes from it, the expressions that come from it can be, uh, they're, they're louder sometimes, you right. know, because it's, it's, it's a strong. Yeah. It's, emotion. A strong, it, 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 it's, it's it, every action has a reaction. Sure. That's, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. We got a couple more here and then we can get out. Huh? Gestures. Okay. Oh, you know, I'm just going to show this. Yeah, thing. sure gestures so i haven't read it yet no it's about body language it looks like um our favorite host from the tonight show jay leno yeah that one jay leno on the cover it's not um the do's and taboos of body language around the world by the author of the best-selling do's and taboos around the world (laughs) and it's the revised and expanded edition, so that's good. Do you want to pick something out and give it a read? Yeah. <laughs> I heard a no. I heard the ghost of a no <laughs> at the beginning of that answer. Um, Table of contents is fine. Appendix is fine. Oh, you're looking. Look, at that's a professional. She's looking in the appendix for what interests her in the book. <laughs> sort of. She was on I'm one actually page. not. I just... Uh... I'm sort of like, what the fuck is this book about? This is so weird. I know. I have a couple of books that are are just like, I don't know how I came into possession okay, of them. Well, I don't know why they're in such good condition. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this because it's bizarre. Uh so there's a section in here that's that lists out customs and body language and various things according to country. Okay. It sounds um, like offensiveness could be. Right. So imminent. in France, some common actions and gestures that you should avoid is um, using toothpicks, nail clippers, or combs in public. Combs? Yeah. Interesting. Or, that seems like it would be a minor, for me to even notice someone's combing their hair. But it, I mean, it's hair, I guess. So like yeah. Can, also, it's uh, rude to have hold, to hold loud conversations in public. I love that. I wish that were true everywhere, don't you? Having loud conversations. Yeah. That we should have them? Or we no, I think oh. sometimes I'm in a bar and it's, it's I'm loud. assaulted on all sides by conversations. Yeah. And well, I, then you shouldn't be in the bar. I, you just really shouldn't be in the bar. <laughs> That's true. But I was uh, working. Conversing with hands in your pocket. Wow, that feels, again, like I'd love to confirm that. That seems like, again, that would be something. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's, it's, it's the psychology behind that would be that you have something to hide, you know? Well, or maybe kangaroos. Yeah, but, or it's cold. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then here in Germany. Yes. It says, a fairly firm handshake is the custom among men. Often with just one or two bumps, children and women will often often offer their hand in greeting too. Public cheek kissing is rare, though it is done only at home among families and very close friends. Charlie. Public, interesting. Yeah. Oh, men rise when a woman enters the room or when they are conversing with a woman. Are they talking about boners? <laughs> That's so weird. However, this practice is seen less and less today. Many women, or women may remain seated when speaking to a man. Yeah, I wouldn't get up for a man. Yeah, that's the spirit. That was Bo Martin. Be sure to check her out in The Expanse. State like sleep. All that beautiful stuff. All of it. All of the beautiful stuff. I love talking to Bo. She'll be back. We're going to have fun. Anyway, uh, you can support the podcast at patreon.com slash Nick Flanagan or by donating to paypal.me slash Nick Flanagan weekly. This will allow me to get better recording equipment because you should see what I'm doing right now. It is awkward. Maybe I just need to kind of go over what I've got. again. It's not important, but I wanted to thank Andy Lloyd for his work uh, producing this stuff and, and he edited the uh, 
interview as well. So thank you. And thank you, Peter Kaliniuk, for the logo, Brittany Lucas, for taking some pictures that I will be using very shortly for the podcast. They're really fun, and they utilize Looney Tunes characters to some extent. And, uh, yeah, for the April Patreon, if you join now uh, for May, there's going to be a lot of new stuff. And I'm going to put stuff up this month, too. A lot more posts, some uh, videos just for Patreons, very for Patreon users. Very cool stuff. All very cool. And really, it's fun to support me because the more support I get, the bigger my muscles get. And then eventually I can help you move. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Oh, man. Nick. Oh, God. Flanagan. Oh, God. Weekly. Oh, man. Nick. Flanagan. Weekly.